and it was originally developed by Andy Rubin, Rich Miner, Nick Sears and Chris White as an advanced digital camera software but soon they realized it had very less potential as compared to the smartphone market. So they scrapped everything and started to redesign Android as a mobile phone software and even reached out to Samsung and HTC but were turned on but then on 2005 Google saw the opportunity and bought Android at around 50 million dollars and with the help of Andy Rubin the first commercial Android version or Android version 1.0 with no sweet code name yet was released with HTC Dream or the T-Mobile G1 in 2008 in order to compete with the Apple's iPhone and thus Android was born. The first version of Android had some early versions of Google's apps like YouTube, Gmail and Maps and it used to look something like this with a physical keyboard as there was no on-screen keyboard yet. The very next year on 2009 Android 1.5 was released and started the sweet code names and this was the Android Cupcake and the first thing Google did on this upgrade was to ditch the physical keyboard with a virtual or on-screen one along with the support for third-party app widgets and video recording, YouTube video uploading, screen animations, auto-rotate options and much more. Then a few months later the same month Android 1.6 or Donut was introduced and it brought in a crucial update, support for more screen sizes and screen resolutions for Android operating system on different size devices. On October 27, 2009 just a few days after the launch of Android Donut, Android 2.2 Eclair was introduced which brought in the support for live wallpapers, voice guided turn by turn navigation on Google Maps, speech to text support but the most iconic one, the once only iOS exclusive, pinch to zoom ability in web pages and it was iconic because it sort of started a beef between Google and Apple back then. About 4 months later Android 2.2 or Froyo was introduced which mainly focused on performance improvements but also bought the support for Adobe Flash which was a pretty big thing back then. Addition of the dock at the bottom of the home screen, also you could now install apps and games directly on your SD card, good old days and some basic voice action support. This was the Android 2.3 gingerbread, somebody else getting hungry? With the first thing that was noticeable was that the whole look of the UI changed to sort of black and green futuristic type design which started giving Android some character or distinctive look for the first time and also performance improvements was there along with the support for multiple cameras that means the front camera support and support for the NFC gyroscope and barometer sensors and also for the first time Android easter egg which was a bug droid standing next to a zombie gingerbread man with some more zombies in the background. Then came a weird time in Android's world with the introduction of Android 3.0 Honeycomb which was specifically made for tablets which came with the Motorola Zoom and remained a tablet exclusive maybe to compete against the iPad which wasn't really a successful one though. However, it did bought another UI look change and this time it followed a space like holographic look which changed the green android look to blue and this design was followed on the next android versions as well and also it had a easter egg of a tron themed bumblebee also a new action and system bar on screen navigation buttons and also new recent apps to see what apps you were using in a card like theme android 4.0 ice cream sandwich came next and it had the same ui design introduced on honeycomb except now it was available on phones also the on screen buttons action and system buttons and even the recent apps were introduced it also came with the built-in support for a photo editor and up to 1080p video recording support on stock android devices also a front camera based face unlocking feature and the ability to access some applications from the lock screen itself then came android 4.2 jelly bean and this was my first android version that came with my samsung galaxy trend duos 2 let me know your first android versions too this was a more fine-tuned version of the ice cream sandwich which made the overall ui a lot smoother with better implementations of animations and a lot of new features including google now which was basically the earliest version of google assistant multi user support, early version of Android quick settings panel and also the ability to add some widgets in your lock screen which Android removed eventually god knows why. But this was the last Android UI that carried the overall dark and blue or green look since the Android gingerbread because when Android 4.4 KitKat was released it changed the look of Android a lot. First the status bar went transparent instead of the black bar, the dark looks of the UI changed into lighter and more neutral looks, you now had a dedicated Google Now homepage along with the OK Google prompt which was only supported when you were on your home screen or inside the google app overall the looks went from a space theme to more like a light transparent theme but also this version of android removed the support for installing apps directly on your sd card or move your app data over to the sd card but android was completely changed with the launch of android 5.0 lollipop which bought in the first version of android's material ui theme it was a card based concept all over the ui like the notification panel which was also now available on the lock screen to be accessed the recent app tray or even in the google apps everything followed this new card like material theme you could now use ok google prompt anywhere from your phone even if it was locked and priority mode for better notification ma management. From the next year Google decided to release only one major Android versions every year and the first on the list was Android Marshmallow or Android 6.0 which was comparatively a small upgrade over Android 5.0 Lollipop but introduced support for new features like fingerprint sensor and USB type C port. It also had a very good feature that was Google now on tap which was basically the early version of Samsung circle to search but Google just like its other products
products never quite realized its potential and was eventually dropped off. Then came Android Nougat which bought in the native split screen feature in Android, the ability to just double tap on the recent apps button to switch between apps, but also a very important feature for Google was introduced which was the Google Assistant, rearrange notification shared fingerprint gestures support and a data saver mode. Also Google's first self-made phones the Pixel series was also launched after two months of the Android 7.0's release. Android 8 or Oreo bought in a lot of changes over the UI like picture in picture mode, notification channels that offered you options of how each app can alert you and also notification snoozing, support for ASE, LDAC, aptX, HD codecs, support for using Android apps on Chromebooks and who can forget the support for Project Treble which was basically a concept project by Google for a modular smartphone which just like any other Google projects was scrapped. Android 9.0 or Android Pie bought in a hybrid gesture support in the place of dedicated home, recent apps and back buttons. There was a single button on the bottom which acted like the home and recent apps button both and a small back button on the side or a small button in the bottom center which used swipe gestures to perform the same tasks. It also brought in a smarter automatic reply suggestion from the notification, more control over Wi-Fi hotspots, digital well-being control and a new and a smarter battery saver mode on Android and the call recording feature was fully removed from the native phone app. Sadly from the next version Google removed the sweet code names from its Android versions and thus from Android 10 it was just a number. But anyways it got rid of any navigation buttons and went full screen gesture mode, new permission settings especially on sharing location info to apps, control for changing depth information on portrait photos, a system wide dark mode and the support for using it in the foldable smartphones. Android 11 came next and was mainly focused on privacy so it extended the privacy features found on Android version 10 and granted only one time permission for location, camera and microphone for all apps using those, a new notification history section and a native screen recording feature and chat bubbles. Then came Android 12 which was an updated design of Android since Android 5.0 Lollipop and introduced Material UI which basically meant that you can now customize your device's look and theme based on your current wallpaper's colors and that will also impact the look of inside of the supported apps and in overall the whole operating system. Along with a mic and camera toggle whenever an app uses those and native support for scrolling long screenshots. Android 13 was a very subtle change as compared to any other Android versions prior to this which mainly brought in some privacy performance and security improvements under the hood as this version was sort of focused for better software and app optimizations for foldables and tablets, especially the pixel tablets or foldables. Then came Android 14 which was basically Google's first step towards AI and this was released with the Pixel 8 series which mainly focused on AI integration within the phone in multiple areas like photo editing or audio editing or even in generating wallpapers. Also a new series of native customization options for the Android lock screen. And as of now we only know a few things about the Android 15 which is supposed to bring back the lock screen widget support which was introduced in Android Jelly Bean back in 2014 and was later removed along with partial screen sharing, satellite connectivity in some regions, a sensitive notification feature that prevents your OTPs from being read by malicious Android apps and even a notification cooldown feature, app archiving and a smart audio connect feature AuraCast which will allow you to connect to multiple headsets or speakers from one single device and other features for foldables and tablets for further refinement. So this was the history of Android versions as of 2024 or whenever you decide to watch this video. But yes if you like this type of content then do let me know and suggest for some more tech history related videos and stay subscribed for those. So thanks for watching and this is Ridip and this is another video you might like and till the next video comes see you guys.